Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Hi everybody, welcome back to Ask Alicia, the weekly series where you ask me questions and I answer them. Maybe. Let's get to your first question this week. First question this week comes from Kenji Kumaki. Hi Kenji. Kenji says, I want to know the differences between as long as and as far as. I always think about how to use these two phrases when I talk to someone. Okay, as long as and as far as. So first, there is the basic comparison meaning, as long as. So A is as long as B and A is as far as B. I'm not going to talk about those, the basic comparison ones. Rather, I'm going to talk about these expressions as part of other expressions. So let's first introduce a couple of examples sentences we can use to talk about the differences between these two. Let's start with as long as. So we use as long as as part of a sentence that expresses a condition. So for example, as long as I finished work at six o'clock, I can come to the movie with you. So another way of expressing this idea is only if I finish work at six o'clock can I come to the movie with you. So as long as expresses this only if condition. As far as, on the other hand, is used in different situations. We use as far as in expressions like as far as I know or as far as I'm aware, which means to the extent that I'm aware or to the extent of my knowledge. So you can see that these two expressions are used very differently. We don't use as far as to talk about a condition like we do with as long as. We use as far as to express the limitations of something. So we use as far as most commonly in these kinds of expressions that describe our personal limitations. Like as far as I know or as far as I'm aware or as far as I've heard these kinds of things that express the limits of our knowledge or maybe in some cases the limits of our abilities. So as far as is used in this way to express that limitation or another way to express this or another way to understand this is like saying to the extent that I am aware or to the best of my knowledge. That's kind of another way to express this idea. So with as far as, we're usually talking about the extent or the limitation of our knowledge or our ability or the information that we have. So as far as is used in expressions like as far as I know and as far as I'm aware to express the limitations of our knowledge, to express that maybe there's some possibility that things are different from the current situation, but based on the information I have, this is what I think or this is what I'm going to do. So this is is what we use as far as to do. On the other hand, when we use as long as, we're expressing some kind of condition. So A is possible only if B is possible. That's what we use as long as to do. So one more example sentence with as long as might be something like, hmm, as long as the weather's sunny tomorrow, we can go to the beach. So again, this expresses that condition, right? As long as it's sunny tomorrow is our condition. Only if A is possible, only if it's sunny tomorrow, is it okay or is it possible to go to the beach? So I hope this answers your question about the differences between as long as and as far as. As long as expresses that only if condition and as far as expresses a kind of limitation or the extent of usually our knowledge or the information we have available. Also, as I mentioned very briefly at the beginning of this answer, we can also use these to make comparisons like A is as long as B and A is as far as B. But I'm guessing your question is about the other uses that I talked about in this answer. So thanks very much for sending this question along. I hope that helps you. Okay, let's move along to your next question. Next question comes from Mei Zhan. I hope I said your name correctly. Mei Zhan, I hope I said it correctly. Uh, Mei Zhan says, please explain how to use defensive and offensive. Okay, great question. So defensive versus offensive. Let's first talk a little bit about sports. So if you're playing a game, if you're playing a sport in which you have a ball, let's say for example soccer, and you have the ball, your responsibility is to defend, right? So you want to keep the ball, right? You want to keep the ball and so you're going to do everything you can with your team to make sure you protect the ball, right? And of course, score a goal. The other team, on the other hand, they want to do everything they can to get the ball, right? They want to get the ball and use it to score a goal. They are the offensive 
team. So we call that the offense or the offensive team. So what's interesting about these words is that we don't just use them to talk about sports and to talk about war and fighting and battles and these kinds of things. We also use these words to talk about our communication. So we sometimes say that someone is on the defensive or they're on the offensive when they start to attack someone else with their words or when they're trying to defend themselves with their words. So for example, if you have a fight with your roommate, your roommate is maybe angry with you because you didn't wash the dishes or something like that. They might say something like, you never do the dishes, I'm always the one cleaning up out here. We could describe that person as going on the offensive. They're the one that is attacking you in this case. You, on the other hand, are on the defensive side. You want to defend yourself, protect yourself. You can say, I'm so sorry, I've been really busy lately, or I just forgot, I apologize, I'll take care of it next time. So you are defending yourself. So we have this defense and offense in our communication as well. It does sound a little bit like sports or maybe like an official battle, like a fight in a wartime situation, but we also use these defensive and offensive words to refer to other situations where we need to protect ourselves or where we need to attack or go after something. So you might also hear offensive being used when someone does something aggressively. Like for example, if a guy sees a cute girl at a bar and he really, really, really wants to talk to her, he might go up and introduce himself and try to make some light chit chat or something like that. And his friends might say like, oh, he's on the offensive. So that means like he's trying to get something. That's kind of the feel with offensive. So you can kind of imagine that there are many different communication related situations in which we might use defensive and offensive to communicate that idea. Okay, to finish this answer, there's one more really interesting point that I want to make, and it's about the word offensive. So you might notice the pronunciation is a little bit different. I've been talking about being on the defensive or on the offensive. Generally, when we talk about sports, we say like he's on the offense, right? So that's the pronunciation we often use to talk about the offense, the side that's attacking. But there's another word that is offensive. So it has the same spelling, right? But the pronunciation of this word is always offensive. So this word means something is disgusting or something causes us to feel very, very strongly in a bad way. So for example, if someone makes a really rude comment, you might say, that's offensive. Or if you smell something that is absolutely terrible, you might say, oh, that is an offensive smell. So offensive means it's something that's like attacking your senses or it's attacking your own personality maybe. So we have this word that means that something is really, really terrible, but the pronunciation is always offensive. You might have noticed earlier, yeah, I said offense, offense, but we also have an overlapping pronunciation here. So we always have to use this offensive pronunciation when we talk about things that are offensive. This is an adjective. We can also use this pronunciation when we want to describe someone on the attack, like, oh, he's on the offensive. We can use that a uh sound at the beginning of this word. However, we cannot use the ah uh pronunciation with the adjective. So we cannot say that something is offensive. We always say that something is offensive. So this is a really small pronunciation point, but make sure that when you're talking about attacking someone or attacking something, you can use both pronunciations. Both are okay, though I would say that the aw pronunciation is more natural. So just keep in mind that if you want to say that something is offensive and it's not good, you should make sure to use that a uh pronunciation. It's offensive. If you want to talk about sports or the attacking side in a situation, you can say they're on the offense or on the offense. Both are okay. So this is an interesting pronunciation point, but just keep in mind you can only say that something is offensive, not offensive. So I hope this helps answer your question about the differences between defensive and offensive. We also talked a bit about defense and offense and related words too. Thanks so much for sending this question. Okay, let's move on to your next question. Next question comes from Sum Yin Wang. Hi, Sum Yin Wang. Sum Yin Wang says, hi, Alicia. I want to know the differences between vegan and vegetarian. Thanks. Yeah, great question. Okay, and a very important thing to know in this day and age. The distinction, to the best of my knowledge, is very, very simple. Let's start with vegetarian. So a vegetarian is the person that does not eat meat. So no pork, no chicken, no beef, nothing. So some people might say, I'm a vegetarian, but I eat some fish. Those people are sometimes described as pescatarians. But I think that some people consider true vegetarians to be people who also do not eat fish. So no red meat, 
no fish. That is someone who is a vegetarian. A vegan, on the other hand, or a meal that is vegan, is a meal that uses no animal products at all. All. So when I say animal products, I mean, of course, meat and fish, but also things that come from animals. So for example, that means dairy. So like milk, yogurt, cheese, butter, that means eggs as well. So things that come from animals are also not consumed by people who are vegan. So people who are vegan do not consume any animal products at all. Or maybe some people who are vegan decide just to do it every once in a while. It's up to individual preference of course, and people who are vegetarian simply do not eat meat. So this is the simplest breakdown of the differences between vegan and vegetarian. Last point for this answer is that it's possible to use vegan and vegetarian to describe people and to describe the food that we eat. So I could say, I'm a vegetarian, or I'm a vegan. You could also say, this dish is vegetarian, or this dish is vegan. So that means it doesn't have meat or it doesn't have any animal products. So we can use these words to talk about the people, to describe the person's choices, or we can use it to talk about the foods that we eat. So I hope this helps you understand the differences between vegan and vegetarian. Thanks very much for sending this question along. All right, that is everything that I have for this week. Thank you, as always, for sending your great questions. Remember, you can send them to me at EnglishClass101.com slash ask hyphen Alicia. Please make sure to send them to the official question submission page. I will definitely see your question there. Don't send it in YouTube comments or Facebook comments or Instagram because there are too many, and I will definitely not <laughs> see your question, probably. So please send me your questions on the official question submission page. Check the link in the description. Also, if you like this lesson, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Also, check us out at EnglishClass101.com for some other things that can help you with your English studies. Thanks very much for watching this week's episode of Ask Alicia, and I will see you again next time. Bye!